really know what makes a great city work, you have to peel back its skin and expose its secret life force. A system of incredible complexity and technology that millions depend on but few understand. A fantastic voyage now begins, a journey deep inside the world's mega cities. They call it the City of Lights. Yet Paris has a dark side. In one of the world's tourist meccas, it's a sight few ever see. It lies just beneath the surface, hidden from view. The bowels of Paris. The vital organ of a city with the world's richest cuisine. The surface world binges, the netherworld purges. And neither can survive without the other. Today, the window to the City of Lights is a manhole. These are the sewers of Paris. They extend for 2,300 kilometers, the distance from Paris to Istanbul. Every day, these tunnels carry away a million cubic meters of human waste. Enough to fill the Empire State Building. Without them, the most beautiful city in the world would drown in a river of its own filth. From this 19th century infrastructure sprouted a sprawling metropolis. Yet as the surface world thrived, the netherworld gasped to keep up. For Paris to survive, this ancient system must chart a new course. The challenge is, harness technology to streamline a black labyrinth, tap science to cleanse an ocean of sludge, and recruit a new breed of workers, not just to maintain the system, but to reinvent it. To connect an ancient city with the new millennium. And Paris must do it all in the dark. The Paris sewers are a parallel metropolis a photographic negative for the streetscape above. It's one of the largest sewage systems in the world. Yet in a mega city of more than 11 million people, sewers are maintained by fewer than 650 workers. Thanks to far-sighted design and brilliant engineering, gravity does most of the work. Sewage moves downhill en route to treatment. It starts in pipes the diameter of a saucer and ends in tunnels the size of a house. In low-lying areas, pumps help move the flow along. The entire system is linked to the surface world by 18,000 drains and 30,000 manholes. But now comes another French revolution in technology. Paris wants to be liberated from paper, from tubes, even from wires. And liberation requires a new system. The technology is called wireless fidelity, or Wi-Fi. Before Wi-Fi, if you wanted to hook up to the internet, you needed a wire. Not anymore. With full Wi-Fi coverage, you could link to the internet in thin air, anywhere in Paris. Data is transmitted wirelessly, like a radio signal, from an antenna straight to your computer. Yet the antenna's range is limited. For full wireless coverage, Paris needs a whole network of antennae. Here's the irony. While the antennae transmit wirelessly, they all have to be wired together to the internet. But in Paris, wires and aesthetics are on different wavelengths. Paris is a beautiful city with a lot of historical monuments 
we have to preserve. Pierre Barnabé is vice president of Alcatel, France's leading wireless provider of telecommunications equipment. His challenge? Install a network of Wi-Fi antennae throughout Paris without scarring the city's fragile facade. Once more, the solution lies in the sewers. Meter by meter, fiber optic cables are extending their reach. One day, these slender threads will weave together every house, office, store, restaurant, and apartment building in Paris. Meanwhile, high above the city, Wi-Fi antennae are sprouting all over Paris. Wireless flowers fertilized in the filth of the sewers. In time, the sewers will carry enough fiber optic cable to link a complete network of Wi-Fi antennae. The antennae will create an overlapping series of coverage areas, or hotspots, until the entire city is connected. Wirelessly, Parisians will receive email, video and data at lightning speed. All thanks to the sewers. Meter by meter, Wi-Fi cables unspool across Paris, stitching this megacity together in an unseen tapestry of technology. Look around. You'll barely see any cables. Everything is underground, which is exceptional and pretty much invisible. Exceptional and invisible, but incomplete. Some tunnels are too small for human hands to reach, the solution? Downsize the workforce. This is a cable-laying robot. The cutting edge of remote access technology. As versatile as it is compact, this machine can multitask, pull wire, make splices, even check its own work. It's an incredibly complex piece of equipment. Uh, it took over three years to develop the robot itself. Jack Conney is the founder and president of Kbotics, an American firm that lays fiber optic cable in sewers. He's come to Europe to demonstrate what his robot can do, and the Paris sewers are the acid test. To prevent corrosion, each component of the robot is vacuum sealed to keep out moisture. In addition to that, there's a gas detector which detects any type of high methane or explosive uh, environment in the sewer. Should there be any type of trace levels, it automatically shuts the robot down. If all's clear, Jack starts laying cable, just like Georges Costa, except Jack works by remote control. The mechanism for assembly pivots to where the drill is located to the exact location of the fiber anchor. The drill goes up, is deployed, and drills through the hose pipe. It retracts, then the assembly pivots. It grabs the fiber cable and then uses a polybutane anchor and places that flush against the hose pipe. In a single eight-hour shift, the robot can lay 800 meters of cable. If you work 24-7, you can do the math numbers, and it's just a little bit under a mile of fiber that can be deployed. Working round the clock, human crews could lay no more than 100 meters of cable a day. With a crew of 10 robots, you could wire the entire city in just three months. For now, it's a good day's work. Jack withdraws his assistant and packs up leaving no trace of this American robot in Paris. Today, Paris's most vital organ is its sewer system. In this nether world, the megacity is both purged and wired, cleansed and connected.
while the old guard put their lives on the line. New recruits join the war on waste. As the never-ending battle rages, this ancient system reinvents itself for a new millennium. So long as this river flows, Paris can see light at the end of the tunnel. When the underworld thrives, the surface world glows, just as a light brightens when darkness falls. In the city of lights, such is life. C'est la vie.